When you're looking for renewable ways to fuel your home, it's hard to beat geothermal heat pumps, at least in theory. Just below our feet, the earth is always at a consistent temperature of about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a looped pipe filled with water or antifreeze, you can tap into that constant temperature. In the summer, that well can be a place to dump excess heat. And in the winter, heat can be pulled out of the ground. That same system can also provide hot water for your showers and your dishes. It's incredibly efficient and requires no fossil fuels. So why isn't geothermal as common as solar or wind? For one thing, drilling a well can get very expensive. Some of it's because you don't know what's below your feet when you start drilling. It could be soft like this, or it could be hard as a rock. It's also typically a messy process that involves big equipment that doesn't fit in every yard. Here on Future House, we've been exploring ways that geothermal has been getting more accessible. I toured a community in Texas that installed geothermal wells before any houses were built. Every home in that neighborhood was connected to the geothermal system, and each house only paid a small portion of the overall costs. But what if you're not moving, or you like the house you live in? Today, I'm headed to Albany, New York, to see the evolution of geothermal that may allow it to get deployed to many, many more houses. Ross, welcome to our drill site. Thomas, thanks for having me. When I think of geothermal though, I am not thinking about established neighborhoods with small lot lines. I mean, I'm thinking usually major renovations, new construction, large projects. This is unique. This used to be the, the case up until now. What we're trying to do is bring geothermal to residential neighborhoods. And to be able to do that, we have to design uh, for modularity and be able to squeeze into really tight spaces. Yeah, when I think of a traditional geothermal rig, I'm not thinking of this something this small. I mean, it's, it's fitting between a tree and the house and a small lot like this. This is, this is compact. Correct. We tried to uh, design to be able to squeeze into really tight spaces. And to be able to do that, we designed uh, the undercarriages to have rubber tracks, gotcha. to be able to rotate 360 degrees gotcha. without churning up the yard. And it also distributes the load so that you don't uh, damage driveways. That's great. All right, so this is the rig. Let me see it. Yeah. So you see how the drill is in place now. The casing is vertical. Mm -hmm. So we're about to commence with sonic drilling, oh. right? And what sonic drilling does is oscillate that casing vertically at up to 150 hertz. And that is 9,000 vertical beats per minute. So if I get a recap here, you're basically hammering the ground at 9,000 times a minute which allows the ground to actually vibrate so fast that it actually becomes like a jello, which allows you guys to drill through the earth so quickly. Correct. And that lets you get in and out of the job much faster. Yes, right now, and we are adding an additional 10 foot of casing okay. to the drill string. And you'll see that we are running 10 foot casing lengths as opposed to 20 foot casing lengths. And that's gonna help us make the entire system more compact. Got it, so if you were using 20 foot casings, this truck would be a lot larger. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. With this sonic system, we are able to install the casing all the way down to bedrock in 30 minutes. A conventional system could take up to seven hours to install the same diameter casing to the same depth. Wow, that is a significant difference. And they will not be able to extract that casing. Every piece of casing that you see on our pipe handler right now has been used on previous projects. We have not replaced a single set of casing. And that's really unique because most installations that I see, the casing stays in forever. Right, and the purpose of that casing is to prevent collapse of the hole and to retain all of our drilling fluids, which will increase the rate of penetration as a whole for the entire project. This allows us to bring down the cost even further for the ground loop installation. So a six inch casing has made its way down 82 feet, lodged itself into bedrock, and now they're switching to another drill rig. Exactly, and that's going to have a down the hole hammer, uh, which we call the DTH, and it's going to be drilling through the center of this six inch casing all the way to bedrock, and then from bedrock all the way through to the total depth, which is the design depth for this well. This uh, well is going to be a 300 foot well, and this project will have two of those 300 foot wells. Gotcha. While we are drilling, you'll see that all of the uh, rock chippings and mud and swale that is uh, excavated from this hole will have to 
come up the hole and instead of dumping it all on the customer's yard, we are transferring that to our mud processing unit. And our mud processing unit will be able to separate um, the solids from the liquids and this enables us to recycle the water and reuse this same water over and over again and clean that water to within 30 microns which is about a thousandth of an inch. So I can see the loop rig coming in. I, I see the high density polyethylene pipe being lowered into the, into the borehole. I also see another pipe coming in at the same time. What's that pipe for? That is the coil tubing pipe and that's going to enable us to grout from the bottom up, which is an underwater grouting technique. That will become a column that will have really good contact with the earth for really good efficiency. Correct. And this grouting or concreting um, uh, layer around it has two purposes. The first purpose is to conduct heat from the soil to the ground loop. And the second purpose is to ensure that no um, pollution or impurities can actually penetrate the soil towards the aquifers. All right, so now we have completed our drilling, looping, and grouting, which means the geothermal loop has been installed, right? And this will be linked towards the inside of the house. And Brian Zimmerly is uh, uh, inside working on that system right now, and he'll be able to show you all the magic inside. So Brian, I design a lot of geothermal systems, and they typically require a custom solution. Right, high-end residential, it's, you know, it's a different market. So tell me about the innovation, what you guys are working on here. Absolutely, yeah. So one of the steps that we've done right off the bat is standardize a lot of the way that we design and engineer the systems. So we use design software to properly size the unit to make sure the geothermal well is properly sized. And that just helps the overall efficiency of the project. Gotcha. What we've also done is that we're reusing any in existing infrastructure that we can. So in this case, the existing air ducts. Gotcha, okay. Um, and so you can see here we've cut off the existing ducts and added our new system in and just added these flexible duct so connectors. So it's pretty much plug and play, right? Plugging it in here, connecting between the supply and the return. Exactly. So nice. the home used to have an air conditioner outside, natural gas furnace inside. What we've done is pulled that old unit out, coil, condenser, furnace, and we've capped the natural gas lines. And now we've got one single geothermal unitary system. So no more outdoor condenser. No more outdoor condenser, which is great. Yeah, and you'll notice too that one of the things you'll typically see in a geothermal system is a separate uh, pump box mm -hmm. that has your pumps and some of the flushing ports in it. We've put all of that into one unit to make the, the installation process that much faster and smoother. And installing things in a factory is much faster than doing it in the field. Sure. And so what you'll see here, what we've got is two pumps that pump uh, through this piping and out to our geothermal well mm -hmm. and it's pumping a mixture of water and a little bit of glycol just to account for any possible freezing conditions. Okay. And so that water then is moving through a heat exchanger inside the tank or inside the unit yep. that uh, exchanges with the refrigerant that's all self-contained inside the box. Gotcha. So on the air side, I see the return duct coming in here. Exactly. What happens next? Yeah, so this is just like any typical uh, system where you, you're pulling uh, return air across a, a refrigerant coil that the fan is pulling and pushing out through the rest of your existing ductwork. Got it. So in the you know winter time when the air is cold, it's coming in right across that coil, warming up and then being delivered to the supply duct into the space. Exactly. And then it's just a continuous cycle where we're then going back and getting more heat from the ground and pulling it back to your heat That's exchangers. Great. That's great. Awesome. What about the blue piping? Yeah, you'll notice that we've got this extra piping here that this is going over to heat your hot water for things like showers or dishwashing. Okay, so domestic water. Exactly. Okay. So in cases, for example, like the, the summertime where you've got extra heat from the heat pump, mm -hmm. before we send that out to the geothermal well, we can send it into a preheat tank. So this tank here is just like any other water heater, but we've just not connected it to any power. Gotcha. Right? Okay. So the cold water comes in here and we can heat it with that excess geothermal before it goes into your traditional water heater. Got it. Got it. So that's commonly called the superheater or preheat tank exactly. connection. Got it. And so your electric water heater doesn't have to work as hard because it's got preheated water. Exactly. Yeah. And it's basically this, you know, can heat anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of the home's annual domestic hot water use. Okay. It just makes the, the, the primary water heater have to work a little less hard. Yeah. So it's all electric, the whole system. 
system is all electric now, which is really great. If you can then pair it up with something like solar on your rooftop, then your home becomes a lot more sustainable. Really exciting. It is exciting. So how many systems have you installed to date? We've installed a couple of hundred, all the way from here in Albany, south along the Hudson River Valley, to just north of New York City. Gotcha. Now, why New York? Yeah, New York for a few reasons. One is there are a few million homes that heat with fuel oil and propane today, and they're going to see the most savings from geothermal. On top of that, New York has generally high energy prices, mm -hmm. and the state provides good incentives for homeowners to choose geothermal today. Gotcha. Now, in a house like the one we just installed in, what's the out-of-pocket expense for that homeowner? Yeah, average out-of-pocket for a home like that would be anywhere from 18000 to 22000 That home coming in around 19000 Okay. Now, that's less expensive than a traditional geothermal system, but that's still really expensive. Yeah, so we're taking a play out of the book of solar, and, you know, a decade or so ago, solar on rooftops was really expensive. And what we're doing is uh, providing financing similar to the way solar did, where we take away that upfront cost. So the homeowner has zero out of pocket on day one, and you replace that with a fixed monthly fee. So they start seeing savings from day one. Gotcha. And what that means is that now they get heating, cooling, and some of their domestic hot water with a, for a fixed monthly rate that's lower than what they would be paying for their utilities otherwise. Gotcha. And it should be added that the homeowner owns the geothermal system. It's an asset that they can amortize over the lifetime and that adds value to their real estate. Yeah, that's a great point. I'm a big fan of geothermal, and I'm glad you guys are making it more accessible. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ross. Thank you. Wow, that is encouraging and interesting to see. I mean, is it possible that this is the breakout moment for geothermal, the one that will make it go mainstream? I mean, it's a huge step in the right direction. You know, historically, you had you know a driller, you had an HVC contractor, you might have a controls contractor. That you know team had to be assembled with them. They They're can. trying to bring it all together into one. You know, right. so. and, and then, of course, the drilling costs, which yeah. was always the biggest right. hurdle. Right. They're starting to attack that, so it's promising. Well, I've been advocating geothermal for a long time, 25, 30 years, but it's been an uphill climb, particularly in New England. By the time you drill down into that granite, it gets really expensive and painful. You know, and what's also happened in the marketplace is these cold weather heat pumps have come along. You know, we, we know that you have a single box outside that can find enough heat even on a zero degree day to right. heat the building. It's hard to argue with that. So it's true. We see these mini splits yeah. all over the place these days. I mean, what do you say to that? Yeah, but you think about ground source heat pumps inherently are always going to be more efficient than an air source, air source counterpart. Because you think about it, the house wants to be 70 degrees and the ground temperature is about 50 degrees. So when I'm heating or cooling, I'm bringing it from 50 to 70. That's a 20 degree delta. Winter or summer, just Winter. 20 degrees. It doesn't matter. But with an air source heat pump, the outdoor temperature when it's really cold out could be zero degrees and I have to bring that up to 70. Or on a hot summer day, it could be 95 or 100 right. degrees. Mm. I got to bring that up. So the delta T is a lot wider with an air source heat pump, so it has to work a lot harder. Yeah, he's the got other, you there. The other thing that's pretty good on the geothermal is it's invisible. You know, you don't see it, you don't hear anything, there's nothing outside. It's like W.C. Fields said about kids, don't see them, don't hear them. <laughs> Did you feel it? Did you feel it? You guys should resolve this over Thanksgiving dinner it's all fun. and report back to us. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.